someone is always going to be judging you. Now, this can put a lot of pressure on you, but that pressure, you know, the iron is going to sharpen the iron. When you allow that pressure to form you and change you, you are going to hold yourself to a higher standard. Hey guys, Hector Castillo, Poppy from girlschase.com. Today I want to talk about first impressions and why they are so fucking important, right? I might have just used the word fucking and you thought, oh, this guy's an edgelord and he thinks so cool and he curses, right? And he's just unclassy and he should be wearing a bow tie or something. I don't know, right? Oh, he's trying to make jokes now. He thinks he's a funny guy, right? So you could be forming so many first impressions just based off of the first few words that I just used if, for instance, you haven't seen some videos of mine. Now, first impressions, I hated the idea of first impressions at first, even though I was always doing them, right? We, we dislike first impressions when they're about us, but then we make, it's, we're all hypocrites, right? To a certain, certain extent. But I hated the fact that people didn't see what I was thinking, how I, the complex thoughts behind some of the statements that I said, they only heard the things that I said or the way that I addressed. Right. And even once I started to understand that, you know, people are a little bit shallow and, you know, first impressions visually, you know, you should dress good and you should look good and how, how the way you carry yourself is very important. But it wasn't until a long time after that, that I understood the first impressions of my words, because I always took a lot of care with the beliefs that I had. And I think a lot of people do. We're just not so good at expressing them. Uh, in, in a good way. Now, some people just have stupid fucking ideas, but I thought I had good ideas. I was in class and I was explaining my theory behind something in literature and philosophy, or I was talking to a girl and I said something and it came off a certain way and I wasn't thinking like that's what I meant to say, or you send a text to a girl and you have an intention of what it's supposed to look like, but she sees it on that screen as something completely different, right? What we intend to say or give off, or even on an energetic level, we feel a certain way or think a certain way or say something with a certain intention and it's received very differently. Now, when we say it in the beginning of meeting someone, it has a profound effect. This is why marketing exists because companies can either be super successful and make millions or billions or just be another company that fails because of their ability to make people see the product in the right light. Even if it's a great product, if you don't market properly, you're not going to sell. So it took me a long time to accept this uh, because I hated the fact that people didn't understand who I was deep down and understand my true intentions behind my words. But then I realized I was saying things that can be very easily misconstrued and that I needed to fix my language. And when I started to understand this, I started to get better with everything, with business, with girls, with friends with first impressions, because first impressions are super crucial. I was talking to my director, the guy behind the camera right now, you can't see him in his beautiful face, but he has an eye tattoo. Now, I, at some point in my life, did not know David. He was just a guy who lived in my building and had an eye tattoo, and he had a, a very funny jacket that he would always wear. I would see him in the shop in our building, and I would see the eye tattoo. Now, I wasn't like, oh, he has tattoos, and he's some fucking gypsy or something, right? I just thought, oh, he thinks he's tough. He thinks he's a tough guy. He thinks he's a cool guy. He's using this eye tattoo to send a message to the world. And he was, and he does have a story behind it. But I made my assumption of what that story was. And then I heard his voice. He has a very deep, sexy voice. And I thought, oh, okay, this guy's, you know, trying to act tough with his eye tattoo and trying to have a deep voice and trying to be tough. And oh, okay, cool. And then we had some, we had a mutual friend that also, I didn't know him, but I knew a mutual friend of ours. And so uh, it, it changed the way I saw him. So I had an impression of him. Then one day I was sitting uh, in the lobby of my apartment complex. I was allowing a friend to fuck a girl in my apartment uh, because I'm a very good friend, uh, I'm a good bro when it comes to letting friends hook up. So I was sitting there just, uh, I would think I was, I was, I was writing. I was writing a, a book idea, some notes for a book. And in Waltz is in David. David and he walks up to me and we had we had seen each other a few times and exchanged like hellos uh, but I had that first impression of him he was friendly but I had the impression he walked up and he just said hey man how are you and I was like oh okay so I had most I had nothing but hellos and visuals right but then he went and said hi 
Okay, then it was still kind of fresh. I hadn't yet met him. So the first impression wasn't totally formed yet. A lot, but not totally. So then, oh, hi, he was very friendly. Okay, now we're starting to see some meshing. I was changing my opinion like that about him. Then he invited me to eat some borscht. For those of you who don't know, it's a super Eastern European type of soup. Uh, and it was really shitty, but I didn't judge him based on that because he admitted it was shitty. <laughs> but he invited me out for free food. So I was like, okay, I'm, I'm letting someone else fuck in my apartment and he's going to do me a service in return, you know, pay it forward, right? So he invited me up to his apartment to uh, have some food. I was like, okay, cool, why not? Fuck it. So we go up to his apartment and we start talking and then I tell him what I do and he tells me that he's an aspiring uh, videographer and editor and he has some cool equipment that he just recently bought, but he doesn't have any jobs to actually use it. It's something that he wants to get into. He's brand new, had zero experience. But I could tell that this guy was smart and he had some he, he had something to him. Like I can tell when, when someone has potential. And I said to him, well, you know, I just started making YouTube videos. <laughs> if you saw my older videos, I think a few of them are available. Uh, if you go way back at the channel where I just had my old Samsung Galaxy 7, I think on my little fucking tripod and I had zero understanding of lighting and zero understanding of angles. And I would like make videos and like dusk would happen and like <laughs> it would go from super bright to like almost dark, but I just upload it because fuck it. Right. And so I wanted something more professional. I was like, all right, let's give this guy a shot. Right. He's new. I'm new. We can work together. And then we ended up working together now for how long? Two and a half years? Two years, two years, yeah. So I changed my first impression because there was still that availability to have that first impression. Had we not, had I already had an impression of him and then he tried to be friendly, I'm, I'm a pretty forgiving guy actually, sometimes way too forgiving. Uh, so I'm open to people changing minds, but most people aren't. There's situations you'll find in life where there's redemptions and there's second chances, third chances, fourth chances. But the vast majority, especially when dealing with girls, right? Because this is a channel about girls, but this is a good lesson for everything, for business, for friends, but mostly with girls. First impressions with girls are going to most of the time, 95% plus, going to be the maker or the killer of whether you get with her or not. The only exceptions are if you run into each other at a later point and you've, you know, changed your attitude, you got more attractive, or she sees you with the girl, or if you're in a social circle where she can see you over a long period of time and start to get a better opinion on, on you based on what people say about you, how people interact with you and seeing you change over time. Excluding those factors, a first impression, that's it, that's all you got. So you need to accept that they are crucial, that most people are gonna judge you based on the way your body is shaped, the, so you can change some of that and some of it you can't change. You can get in better shape, but you can't get taller and you can't really get more beautiful without plastic surgery, but you can take care of your skin uh, or some of you may have really bad skin problems. Well, you can still get in good shape, right? Oh, but you can't get in good shape. You have, you know, no legs and no arms. Well, you can still do something at some point, right? I've seen some videos of guys with no fucking legs doing fucking pull-ups. So I don't think you have any excuses. You can dress better. You can learn how to be funny. Right? You can learn how to change your body language, to change the way that you move your hands, to change the way that you speak, the vocal tonality that you have when you walk up to the cashier and say, oh yes, can I have a pack of this or this? And the girl next to you hears your sexy voice. So her first impression based on what you look like, but then you open your mouth and oh, interesting, piques her interest. So how you look, the way you act, the way you speak, the words that you use, the attitude that you have when you first meet people and even the attitude when you're just around people because people are gonna feel your energy. So become self-improvement oriented, should be pretty obvious. And on every angle that you possibly can have, understand that they're gonna make first impressions based on those things. But then thirdly, what I want you to start acting like is, <laughs> I almost put these two down. Uh, I want you to understand or, or come with the mentality that Someone is always watching. Someone is always going to be judging you. Now, this can put a lot of pressure on you, but that pressure, you know, the iron is going to sharpen the iron. When you allow that pressure to form you and change you, you are going to hold yourself to a higher standard. I think not caring what people think about you 
is sometimes a really great mindset, and especially once you've kind of you know done what you wanted to do and you're as cool of a person as you think you wanted to be or close to, and then you can kind of just let go of your need to be better. Until then, I think, and even past that point, honestly, you should care what people think because it's going to affect your behavior and hold you to a higher standard. And when you hold yourself to that higher standard, you're gonna become better. And when you care about what people think from a, hopefully a detached point of view, and I have a video on this actually, uh, where I go more into details, so check out the description below where I talk about, you know, the contradiction or paradox of caring about what people think about you. But if you act like someone's always watching, or another way to think about it, act like anytime you're gonna go meet someone or go out of your house, you're gonna possibly run into a girl that could become your future girlfriend or just a girl you're gonna hook up with, but you know, you wanna have sex, you wanna have fun, possibly your wife or possibly the mother of your children. And if you go out with this mentality and accept that people are gonna judge you and adapt to it and make yourself better, then the world will become much easier because unless you're gonna go live in the woods as a monk, you're gonna need to interact with people when you're interacting with people, they're going to judge you. And a lot of times they're gonna judge you based on the first impression. And that first impression is much easier to do correctly the first time than it is to fix it later. It is so difficult to change first impressions. I've seen that with every point in my life in university, when I started to get a reputation as the fuck boy and as the player, and then I tried to start to lose some of it and I saw the, the consequences of it. There was a lot of pros, but there was a lot of cons. I saw it in my social life after college. I saw it on YouTube where people were making first, uh, tons of first impressions about me, sometimes unjustified, and sometimes they were justified in like seeing me say this thing or act this way, but I was like, well, there's tons of other videos that are showing me being, you know, having depth and doing this, but they saw only that. And if I was more aware and more mindful of, look, every little thing that I can say, I mean, at a certain point I need to be who I am or who I want to be, right? But to a large extent, I need to, I need to understand that people are going to judge me. And so learning my own lesson and drinking, <laughs> what's it, drinking my own cum? <laughs> See, if I make jokes like that, you're like, Jesus Christ, that's weird. But some of you might like that. But if I were to make an edgy joke like that, it could have a very spread reaction. So I'm not asking you to become some cookie cutter that everyone likes, because that's impossible, but I'm just asking you to understand that people are gonna judge you and use that knowledge to form yourself as you wish to get the things that you want, right? Use the knowledge to get what you want. Care enough about what people think about you and understand enough that they're gonna make first impressions in order to get what you want out of life and to make yourself better because the opinions or judgments of others can improve you. Cause like I said, it can be painful, but iron sharpens iron. So first impression, super important, very easy to make, very hard to change. So do it right the first time and act like everyone's watching and act like when you go out, there's gonna be a girl waiting for you and that you can interact with. And if you do it good, you're good. If you do it bad, you're usually fucked and you don't get a second chance. Life is harsh like that, but I'm telling you the truth and the truth is sweeter than lies. So. Cool. Hector Castillo, Poppy from GirlShades.com. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, ring the bell. If you had a good first impression of me, if you didn't, go fuck yourself. Bye.